What? Nintendo's releasing a new console? A new device that isn't just an old device with a different name slapped on the end or supersized to XL Super Edition Plus U? What the heck? All cheekiness aside, welcome to uh, a little discussion video about the Nintendo Switch, Nintendo's upcoming console that's going to be released in March of uh, next year, 2017. Decided to make this standalone video because this news came out like a day after I'd recorded the uh, most recent podcast episode that comes out on Saturday, so I uh, just missed it and I wasn't, wasn't able to talk about it there. Uh, but honestly, this topic's probably going to take, you know, a good chunk of time, so this works out well. Unfortunately, I still sound like shit. My voice is terrible. I'm so congested, so sorry for that. But um, I just kind of wanted to give my opinion on it, um, because if you know any bit about our channel's background and stuff, we don't really talk about Nintendo or play much Nintendo at all. So um, as someone who's partially interested in it, I think there's more people out there. And I just wanted to kind of give my feedback and concerns and uh, generally talk about what looks to be a pretty cool upcoming system. So the first thing we saw of the Nintendo Switch, previously codenamed the Nintendo NX, um, was with a little single shot trailer that showed, I think, better usage and more explanation of what this console handheld hybrid actually does than any of the previously shown materials for stuff like the Wii U. I mean, you can watch this thing and you understand what it does and its functionality. Wii U, people just didn't really get it. And I think that's a large reason why people didn't like it. There were certain games that were really nice uh, that would, uh, you know, eventually were made for it, such as Super Mario Maker. But a lot of people just saw the giant gamepad and was like, what the hell are you doing? This is so alien. Uh, with this thing, you have a dockable console that you can play at home on a big screen um, then you can take apart a modular controller, throw it together, and you have a tablet on the go. Or you can play with a pro controller that's similar to like the Wii, uh, Wii U that is, uh, for if you want a more standard controller experience. You can even take off these modular controllers for two-player, such as Mario Kart, on the go for less, you know, uh, control-intensive games. I think it's just a really cool concept. Um, there's been a couple more details that's been coming out over... The next over the uh, the couple of days of the trailer release, so I'm actually kind of glad that I didn't really uh, have the opportunity to talk about it until just now because a, a few things that I that left me questioning were number one, what's the power of this thing? You know, uh, how well is it going to be able to run games? Are the games that it's showing off actually legit? We have uh, Zelda Breath of the Wild. It showed a screenshot or a couple of uh, gameplay clips of the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim which if Nintendo is now supporting Bethesda games, that's amazing. Um, we see what looks like a new Mario Kart or updated version of it, a newer or updated version of Splatoon. Um, wondering, you know, the general cost, how the peripherals are going to work, and a lot of those questions haven't been confirmed or answered, but we do have a few things that uh, have been confirmed in the past couple of days. One of which is being that the power of this console, or whatever you want to call it, is self-contained in the portable tablet. So the dock that it sits on in the living room actually doesn't supply it any more power, which I find both interesting and concerning. What I was hoping for was a portable tablet that was about in the neighborhood of a 720p screen. I think that would be enough. Um, maybe a little bit higher would be nice, but I think for a portab portability and battery life balance and all that, a nice screen 720p would do. And then... You could keep your frame rate and fidelity just on lower resolution, and then you would get some type of boost by docking it. But it appears that everything is just being what it is in the tablet is what it is. Um, it's going to be ran off of a custom NVIDIA Tegra chip uh, under Pascal architecture, so under the same architecture as the GTX 10 series graphics cards, though by no means is it going to be as powerful as it as the way it's looking. Um, the Tegra processors are the same ones that worked in like the NVIDIA Shields, so people are starting to speculate that it's going to be around the uh, power of an Xbox One or PS4, probably closer to a PS4, and I'm hoping that's correct. Based on Nintendo's art style and the general types of games that will be running on it, I think that would be enough, especially given the right price point, but none of that's confirmed yet. But what we do know is that the power of this thing is contained within the tablet itself, which if it does provide current generation console 
power on the go for that with a reasonable battery life. I think that's an achievement worth celebrating. The other super interesting thing to me is that they have ditched discs, which was a rumor that's been going around for a long time and something that I wish everyone would have went to. So instead of Blu-ray discs, they're going back to cartridges, which is really nice because flash memory has come along so much over the years that storage and uh, reliability is just so much more uh, on, on cartridges based off of flash memory. And though the cost is more expensive, I think that doing this, it will drive costs down and ultimately will the consumer will see benefits because of it. What is confirmed, though, is that the Switch cannot physically accept 3DS or Wii U games. Even though 3DS games are cartridges, uh, I can't just take my copy of Ocarina of, Time, Ocarina of Time and stick it in the back and it's going to work um, natively. That doesn't mean that they won't allow it to work over downloads or... Um, do their little downloadable engine with other like Super Nintendo games or NES games or whatever that was on the Wii U. Uh, that hasn't been confirmed or denied, but that's certainly not out of the question yet. I have a feeling that a lot of things are going to be cross-playable, uh, including Wii U titles, because of their similarity. But just don't expect to be able to rip out whatever discs you have on your Wii U and throw it in the back of this thing. It's just not going to work. However, Amiibos are going to continue to be supported, which makes me think that Nintendo is really serious about this not being a replacement product. This is not a new generation. This is just kind of a sideways, um, a lateral movement of the Wii U. Perhaps it's going to be a little bit more powerful, but it's still within the same ecosystem. So that does give me a little bit more hope that things are going to be a little bit more compatible. And even though I don't own a Wii U, that those that do and are more invested into the Nintendo ecosystem will be able to keep a lot more of their stuff and be able to use it on new hardware. So that's the hope. A thing that really impressed me about the press release and the trailers was just how many third-party developers are on, on board with this and, and publishers, of course. I think the list is maybe twice to three times as long as the developers that actually supported the Wii U. Um, we have huge name players like Ubisoft and EA and Epic Games, of course, which means that Unreal Engine 4 will be supported. They um, confirmed that outright, which is really cool. But we have also some more, I think, smaller developer teams like From Software of the Dark Souls ser series. Of course, they're not tiny by any means, but in the grand scheme of things, they're not huge. And uh, that gives me hope to think that, oh, well, if, if they're supporting this hardware, that means pretty much anyone should be able to... Uh, you know, do something with it. So that's really cool. A bunch of um, other prolific developers and publishers, of course. But Bethesda and 2K, neither one of them actually confirmed that their titles actually were supported on this console, uh, that being Skyrim in one of the NBA 2K titles that was shown during gameplay. I'm assuming they work and they just have some... NDA or something going around that, it, you know, there's some red tape saying that they just can't explicitly say right now. Uh, because if people see Skyrim mobile and that doesn't actually be able to be true, you're going to have a lot of pissed off people. Now, me, I don't ever really want to play Skyrim without uh, being on my giant monitor and having a million mods in front of me. But for those that just want a mobile experience and a handheld, yeah, don't piss them off. Don't show gameplay if it's not going to actually be real. But there's plenty of other developers that have confirmed that, yes, they are 100% in on this system. And I think it's a great thing. We already have more people supporting this thing than probably the Wii U and Wii combined did between their two third-party developers. And that's the thing that Nintendo really needs. They have great first-party support, but for them to really be a big you know, market competitor here in the West, at least, they do need that third-party developer support. Now, of course, there are a million other unanswered questions from these teaser trailers, you know, uh, what's the maximum output of this thing? Is it actually 1080p 60 capable and natively supported? Is it 4K supported? I can guarantee you we're not playing games in native 4K, but it can at least, you know, upscale it like the Xbox One S does. Do we have HDR support? Do Does that little weird little transformer hybrid controller thing actually ship with the console standard or you want to buy that separately or as part of a bundle? What's the battery life of this thing expectedly when you're under a full gaming load? Uh, how long does it take to actually get this thing to charge? What are the launch titles for this? Are you know we going to be able to have Breath of the Wild day one? 
what are the launch bundles. Um, you know, there's just a lot of things that are unanswered right now, but I think that's going to ultimately add to the fuel of what people are, you know, getting excited over this is that it is unknown and it's a different cool direction for Nintendo. And I think that's kind of what they need. They don't need to completely do a 180, but this is a nice little innovation that when it has me interested, I think it says a lot. And that brings me to my personal point of view. Now, of course, some people will be like, oh, of course, you're just making a damn reaction video to a new console because uh, that's what YouTubers do. Um, but I don't give a flying fuck about PlayStation 4 Pro or for that matter, the upcoming Xbox One codename Scorpio that will be coming out next year, supposedly. I don't care. I own an Xbox One. Uh, and I don't care. My roommates own PS4, so they don't care about PS4 Pro. It's the same thing. Um, they're selling higher-end consoles that will be able to do a higher graphic fidelity, but to an audience that ultimately says time and time again, we really don't care about graphical fidelity, because if we did, we would just buy PCs. Um, you're not getting top of the line graphics on these multi-platform games you're not getting top of the line performance what you're getting is a decent value proposition to be able to just jump in these games and have them work most of the time that's not always true and you get day one humongous patches that have you know significantly reduced the amount of hands-off um on these current generation of consoles, which just drove me mad on my Xbox One, having just huge updates that don't even install quickly or download at the full speed of your internet uh, is capable of because of Microsoft servers being terrible. So that's why I'm not talking about them. I don't care. They're they're contradictory. You know, they're contradicting themselves. They're selling off of buzzwords ultimately. And yeah, I, I think some of the technology behind it's cool, being able to upscale basically a 1440p image to 4K and having it look 90% as good. I think it's also a stupid waste of time when you're running the game at close to low medium settings. <laughs> um, I, I, I don't know. I don't get it. And I think they're uninteresting and ultimately dumb because like I said, you have the same people who will up and down defend consoles uh, and some of their shittier practices, price not being one of them, um, saying that graphics don't matter, frame rate doesn't matter, but yet we'll buy an incremental upgrade for that exact thing, or we'll buy a remaster of a game for that exact thing. So that's why I don't care about them. I'm not covering them. And as a PC player, I'm not interested in them. But as a PC player and a somewhat Nintendo player, um, I played the NES and Super Nintendo and the Nintendo 64, a little bit of GameCube, uh, most of the handhelds, skipped out a few of those, and now I'm back on 2DS just for the occasional screwing around with Legend of Zelda and uh, kept me occupied on plane flights, but now I'm interested again because if this is the right price point, if this is as portable and lasts as long as it says it does, or as I, as I hope it does... Um, if it has the right titles and availability and just, you know, ability to grab it and go and play with friends, do it easily, and hopefully Nintendo will start to understand online a little bit more for those that would use it like that. I think this is a compelling offer. Um, Nintendo doesn't really try to compete with computers much. They don't try to, you know, encroach on that. They try to do something completely different and just show you, you know, different games. And as much as I don't like platform exclusives, I wish everything could play every game if it was technically capable of doing so. Um, you know, I think Nintendo has the right to do it here with with games like Legend of Zelda being able to, you know, take it from, you know, docking it on your TV and playing it there and then taking it and, uh, you know, taking it on the go when you're walking your dog in the park or whatever the hell that guy's doing in, the tra in this, uh, this trailer here, but... But yeah, overall, I think this is a system that would complement a entertainment system quite well. Just be have something that you could sit down on your couch and you know play Breath of the Wild or pick it up and go when you have to. Um, at least for my use case. And of course, it has to hit that perfect price point. Um, if this thing is between three hundred and three hundred fifty dollars, you know, base price with the minimum amount of stuff you need for it to to actually work, I think it's going to sell like hotcakes. I think it'll sell twice as much as the Wii U did at launch. Um, 
but if it is any more expensive, it starts encroaching on that price point of the Xbox One and PS4 at launch. I'm not so sure, and it does depend on how powerful it is. That will be a deal breaker for me if it is, you know, somehow less powerful than the current generation of consoles, especially when you own a high-end PC. Thanks, I'll, I'll just sit that one out. But assuming that it is PS4 regular grade power or more, and it comes in at that sweet spot, $300 or $350 uh, range, and that, you know, a pro peripheral or a couple of other necessary things you need for it aren't but, you know, about $30 to $50 more, and there's some decent bundles, you know, if I can get the base console, a couple pro controllers, a couple decent games for it for 450 to 500 bucks. It might be a compelling day one buy. Of course, I'm drowning in video games as it is right now, but hopefully by then it would start to sputter out a little bit and uh, you know, it might be a very worthwhile purchase within the first couple months of release. So, I got to say, for the first time in well over 10 years, I'm excited about a Nintendo product. Um, well done, Nintendo. I hope you keep up the um, the good news and keep up the momentum because uh, I, I really look forward to this thing coming out and it's going to put a boot in my ass to complete Ocarina of Time. I doubt I'll be able to do Majora's Mask now, but uh, that's okay. I've been enjoying that game too. So yeah, uh, let me know what you think of the Nintendo Switch and uh, if you have like a Wii U or something, how you've been enjoying that. And uh, or if you've never had a t Nintendo product, tell me if you're excited for this one or not. So uh, yeah, that'll be that'll do it for my random bullshit video on the Nintendo Switch. Um, maybe I'll make a whole 30 cents off of this video if that piggybacking off of their success. Oh boy, thanks for watching. We'll see you later with something else. Maybe uh, maybe who knows? Sega will surprise us with with something down the line. But but I doubt it. We'll see you later. Bye bye.